the vein pick was just, I bet you I could eat this hook and live. And he'd die instantly, and I'd be like, yep, yep, that's how that works. We have one more week of the LCS regular season to go. A ton of impactful games down the stretch. Everybody's clumped up, and the standings could change drastically over the course of just three days. So let's get into the pit. First and foremost, I owe Mark Z an apology. After a three week break, I was figuring that viewership was probably going to drop. No LEC lead in, even though you did have the co streams of Cajol and Bailano and everybody else, or B Bailano. I really need to look up his name so I remember it. I didn't think that would be enough to overcome what was just like the LE LCS as a standalone product, not on stage, not with a crowd. And while not having a crowd did take a little bit away from me, clearly it did not impact viewership as viewership was up substantially this past weekend. Of note, drops were on. I'm not sure how much that actually impacts it, but my question would be one, why isn't that turned on all the time? Like, shouldn't that just be a default thing that's on for watching lowly sports forever? But regardless, viewership was up. You went up 2000 average minute audience over the entire season just by the impact of those two days. So yes, it was a pretty substantial increase, which is amazing for the LCS. And I owe a apology to the league because yeah, it worked. Whatever you were doing, it worked. As for that cage match itself, I'm not going to lie. It wasn't bad. There were moments that were pretty fun. The Bwipo and Sniper trash talk, Dokla popping off out of his chair. But I just want to see more of that stuff. If you're going to have these cage matches where people were standing across from each other, the broadcast did a good job of like leaning into it at first. But I think these are all things that like should be with the broadcast in general. I just want to see more people pop off. It's like whenever I see Call of Duty players across from each other, I'm so used to like them standing up, talking their crap, like literally flipping them off, doing like whatever the entire time. I'm trained for that. But again, league culture is different. It's not as aggressive. It's not as braggadocious. And that's fine. Overall, no denying an incredibly positive weekend for the LCS as a whole. Were there any other headlines that I'm missing? No, I don't think so. So I will just pitch again. If you are in New York City or around the New York area, we are having a finals watch party at a bar right underneath the Empire State Building called Legends. I know it's Easter Sunday and I want to preach this to as many people as humanly possible. Please, if you're in the area, come. If you're in Baltimore, if you're in DC and you need somewhere to go that weekend, come on up to New York. You can watch it with us. It's going to be a blast. I'm trying to get as many people as possible. I'm working with uh, potential orgs and the LCS to try and get some giveaways. I will have more updates on that as time goes on. But again, it would mean the world to be able to pack out this venue and show that New York or at least the Northeast esports scene is alive and well. So let's get to the LCS standings. Coco's getting covered because we got to talk about this. First and foremost, FlyQuest, number one team. They beat 100 Thieves pretty decisively. Whippo had a great Olaf game. Took advantage of Sniper having a pretty rough game. And they're your clear cut number one, two games clear from dropping their first or second seed. They notably hold a 2 0 tiebreaker directly with 100 Thieves. So, in the case that they drop a game this week and 100 Thieves goes undefeated, they are still not in risk. It would take somebody else coming up to that level to tie them to be able to force a three way tiebreaker before they have to worry about anything. On the bottom side, Immortals are your last place team, notably dropping the game to Shopify themselves not winning their second game either. And here we are in the situation where they are two games behind getting into playoffs. Let's go one by one and talk about the potential possibilities that we have going into the weekend. Starting with that two game gap, Immortal schedule's not really the easiest. 100 Thieves, C9, TL. That TL game being arguably the most important. So the path of least resistance here for them to get a tiebreaker to get into playoffs is that they need TL to lose out because Dignitas and Team Liquid both play each other on Saturday. That means that one of them is going to jump up to six wins, which given a mortal schedule, it is highly unlikely that they get to that point. Their best case scenario is that they need to win two. So they pull off the 100 Thieves upset, they pull off the Team Liquid upset, and Team Liquid goes completely winless, then yeah, they stand a chance at getting a tiebreaker. But it's not easy. Two games to overcome with only three games left, it's not 100% mathematically impossible for Immortals to climb out, but this will mark their fifth split where they finish missing playoffs again. I know some people, when I talked about this on Twitter, had gripes with me, including Lock-In. Whatever. At the end of the day, it's last place. Regardless of whether you considered Lock-In a series tournament or not, personally, I put more weight on it than most just because it's an event. 
period, and that matters to me, but whatever. You assign whatever historical percentage you want to it. Regardless, Immortals has to do something. I don't care if they're break even as an organization and they're profitable. Great. What are you doing to add value to this league? And as of right now, that is nothing. So maybe make a run here. Maybe do something else. I don't know. Again, I always feel bad for the staff behind the scenes. I know Charlie on their social team. Like, please don't take any of this to heart, Charlie. Not on you. You need a team that can compete and you need some interesting storylines because IMT's content has actually gotten better as the split has gone on, like pretty substantially. But it's just you can't get people to really care all that much if there's no geolocated tie and you're going to finish last every single split. You need some results to go with it alongside decent content and then it works out. But keep doing the content stuff because in the world where you do eventually get results, it could work out. Next, Shopify. Still a hard schedule as well, but luckily they're only one game behind playoffs, so it's a little bit more doable. NRG, 100 Thieves, Cloud9. You gotta win at least one of them, and pray to God that again, either Dig or Team Liquid goes completely winless. The odds of that, not looking good. The odds of Shopify making it in the playoffs, slim to none, same thing, even though they're only one game behind. Like, you look at the schedule, you look at the matchups that exist elsewhere, and it's just like, I... Team Liquid has a game against the Mortals. I think Dig's got to be the team that you're looking at to possibly go winless, but even then, you still have to have a clear upset over one of these teams. And granted, Shopify almost did that. They almost won their game this past Sunday against Dignitas and had a lead, but threw it. So, like, that, that was your moment. That was your chance to, like, really put yourself in a prime position to get into playoffs. Or at least, like, have it so that you and Dig could both go winless. And it didn't work. So now, you got to play the hard game. Now you gotta find a win out of one of these remaining three, and I'll be honest, I ain't got faith. For Dig, I just briefly touched on that as well. Equally as difficult of a schedule. Cloud9 and FlyQuest, that game versus Team Liquid being the most winnable of the three, but luckily they are that one game clear with everybody below them having a difficult schedule. All they have to do is simply, they, I, I mean, it's, it's weird to say, but they could literally lose out and still make playoffs. It's gotta be like the most anticlimactic way to get into playoffs ever, but it's the most likely path that they're gonna end up taking. I, just, I don't see a upset possible beyond that. So, I mean, hey, good luck. Team Liquid's a weird one because you just feel like they have potential to make a run here. Like they're only a few pieces away from like really getting this to click. They nearly beat Cloud9 this past weekend. They didn't beat NRG as well as NRG had like this weird strap where who he was level 16 support, like one of the most fed players in the game. And they still nearly came back from that. It was like Team Liquid just feels like they're they're right there and being able to put some of these pieces together over some of the top teams, but they just can't do it. I mean, luckily, they're in a very good position right now. They play Dignitas, who's even with them in the standings. They should, in a normal world, be able to lock playoffs. I think Friday is a loss, pretty given. FlyQuest looks damn good right now. Even though they dropped a game to C9, I think they rebounded pretty well that dig game is winnable and you finish the season with immortals so it's like yeah you got a pretty clear path to making it out and if they don't go two and one this weekend then yeah i mean are we really sitting here worried about what you're going to do in playoffs anyways nrg and c9 feel like they had almost identical weeks but starting with nrg very sloppy 2-0 like it wasn't pretty but i mean you got there so it's irrelevant you're sitting currently top four and for those that need a reminder Top four teams get double elimination in spring playoffs. The number one seed gets their choice between three and four of who they want to play. So realistically, for NRG and C9, you're battling to see if you can jump up to that second place so that you don't get picked by FlyQuest. If you can knock 100 Thieves down to that level, I'd imagine that FlyQuest will take 100 Thieves given the unknown quantity that they're likely going to be in a best of five, whereas NRG and C9 have clear experience. They start their weekend off with a pretty cupcake match against Shopify and then finish the week off with 100 Thieves. So not an easy schedule at all for NRG, especially that FlyQuest game. But the goal for them should just be keeping top four, in my opinion, especially when you have Team Liquid that looks like they might go two and one and close that gap. You got to get that second win somewhere. Assuming you beat Shopify, assuming you lose to FlyQuest, uh, 100 Thieves, yeah, that matchup becomes all so important because if you lose that, then you're in a tiebreaker potentially and things get a little bit hairy. Do I see them going 3-0 this week? No. But let's check in with Paul, their LCS super fan, to see what his thoughts are after the week. It's just, they, dude, they look like, it makes no sense. Like, the TL gave you curb stomp lanes. You own, like, well, they have a gold lead. Like, somehow, they just kept having a gold lead, even when they wouldn't get any kills. And I'm sitting here going, like, okay, this is, like, 
I guess isn't a bad thing because they have a gold lead, but also they were just like perma running it down for some reason in fights and they weren't really doing a ton and they barely beat TL, they barely beat Immortals, and if I'm being honest, TL looks like they're one of the worst teams in the league after last week. <laughs> yeah, I like... really, I really don't get that feeling from TL. TL to me, like, I, I hate to put blame on a single person, and I know like this is just going into everything that the communities have, but like, dude, APA ran it four straight times at the end of that game. Like, got caught mm. out in side lanes, ran it in fights, like. You, you yeah, can't. TPing instead of ulting. Yeah, on like, like we were, we were at the bar and it was like, bro, he's not gonna get the dragon end time. There's like there's no chance. We're like he doesn't have TP. He's got ult, but I don't think he can get there with ult. We just see him coming late and they already secure dragon. It's like, what? Yeah. And I mean the play, bot too. Like or yeah, bot tier two. He like TPs while he has his R. It's like, bro, why would you not just R, and then tp like safe tp for something else in a safer location like that kill he just gave to jojo i was like are we yep. are we trying to give them the game like <laughs> so both you and c9 had what i would consider sloppy two a weeks like yes cloud yeah. looked good against FlyQuest. i will give them that the nidalee renekton combo was good but like they did not look good against tl you guys yep. looked very sloppy in your two games but you're still unironically in a position to be top four <laughs> i know my question for you would be in a world where it is between you and cloud nine or you and 100 thieves do you think there's any world where FlyQuest does not pick you as their first opponent it's us or c9 yeah i think yeah there's a world where they would want c9 more than us like NRG's problem is that they like they're kind of running it down in like some of these fights. Well, I guess that's C9's too a little bit, but I think NRG's team fighting is like actually something where you're like, do I really want to deal with that for five games? Like, there's always a moment where NRG like somehow wins the team fight or does something that's super wild, which I'm not saying C9 can't do either, but. Like, NRG just finds crazy ways to get by. Now, granted, both top lane matchups are fine. Like, if you're looking at the top laners, if you're looking at the mid laners, I guess you'd rather play Palafox than JoJo, but JoJo hasn't been doing anything to me that's like, this guy's solo holding up the world of C9 right now. And then Jungle, I think it's pretty safe to say that's just is what it is like yeah. at this point i i think contracts and blabber's playing a little down this season like i he's not terrible don't get me wrong like blabber at his peak would probably be one i'd want to avoid but bottom lane there's no world where you pick fbi like i feel like like you don't want to face fbi right now he's almost solo holding this team together and who he's like actually playing really well like, his peeling and his ability to, like, somehow scrounge it back. Like, the only problem we had was Dokla picking Vayne and then just still losing the lane anyways and not getting, like, any advantages off of all the resources they threw at him. Yeah. And like, who he, the game prior, is just this unbelievable dude. Nautilus that's, like, level 18, yeah. 10 CS per minute. It's the most obnoxious thing I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. They're, I mean, yeah, they, they're playing, NRG isn't like playing great, but if you have to pick one of them, why would you want to pick NRG right now? Like, honestly, why would you want to pick any of them? Like, Hunter Thieves is just going to throw team fights at you until you either break or, or somehow win. Like, they do not yield and they just sit there and chuck things at you. NRG basically does the same. We just have been doing it worse. <laughs> and... <laughs> And C9 is like C9. You don't really want to face them in playoffs, but also their the TL game kind of made me like. Uh, I guess they're still like the same thing they've been all year. They don't look much better, and it took TL like literally handing them the game to lose. Like almost, I do think Fudge is the most punishable of any top of Sniper, Dokla, Fudge. Mm. I think. Sniper this you, weekend, I will say, did run it down true. a bit. He did. But Fudge is also like, 
in a position where he's counter picking and getting eight up. So that's fair. So yeah. ahead of the hundred thieves NRG game, that will likely determine uh, pretty much both the fates of or the fate of both teams. Yeah. Are you nervous about facing Sniper and Quid and River? I don't think you're going to be worried about the bot lane from what I from what I gather here, but yeah, does, yeah. does mid jungle specifically worry you at all? It does. I mean, Quid definitely pushed himself farther up the MVP ladder for me. Like, dude looks more like an MVP every moment he plays. Granted, the FlyQuest game didn't go perfect, but it is what it is. I mean, he was still poking out Jensen and Lane the entire time. Yeah. It wasn't until, you know, Sniper comes down and gets yeah. them caught <laughs> under tower that it's like, okay, well, now I'm screwed. But, like, individually, the yeah. one, one I, I think he was handling Jensen decently well yeah. in Karma of all champs. My biggest worry is, like, 100 Thieves loves team fighting, and so do we. Or they just love fighting in general. And so do we. So it's like that can quickly snowball either way. So like the early fights are going to be a big deal. Now, granted, like for a hundred thieves, it's probably better to play a team that's super aggro, like a hundred thieves is, because they at least do the things that you are trying to do as well. So you can try to mitigate what's going on. I am a little afraid of Palaquid, like. Palafox isn't playing bad, but he hasn't been... Uh, there's some moments that I'm like, ah, oh, man, what are we doing here? Like, why are we getting caught on these certain spots? But luckily, top lane, it's Sniper and Dokla, so maybe Dokla can, like, get an advantage in this one. Now, granted, Sniper isn't, like, so he just rolls over. He actually has good lanes. But I'm really praying Dokla can do something up there, because... <laughs> Like, I spent so much of my life hating on Dokla, then I pick a team that has Dokla, and he decides to hit me for no reason. <laughs> I was like, what are you doing? Like, the Vayne pick was just, I bet you I could eat this hook and live. And he'd die instantly, and I'd be like, yep, yep, that's how that works. Yep. <laughs> and... I, so can, like... I cannot wait to see it. I really can't. Luckily, we have Juan, though. <laughs> Juan is just a saving grace of anything. He's going to want different teammates after he gets done with Hunter Thieves. Okay. I'm just saying. <laughs> For Cloud9, I'm just going to put this out there. I think Blabber's Dark Horse MVP watch right now. The Nidalee game that he played on Saturday was absolutely incredible. And Sunday, even though it was sloppy and he's on Ivern, so he didn't really have as much impact as he could on a champion like Nidalee, he still played decently well. And if you go back to the beginning of the split, I think Blabber was one of the main reasons why they were playing insanely well to begin with. So when you look at their schedule and you see Dignitas, Immortals, and Shopify, I'm looking at three games that he could possibly pop off and cement himself as MVP, especially if they're able to go 3-0 and climb up to a tiebreaker with Hunter Thieves for that second place spot. If they can get there, huh things get interesting. I would not want to be the team that FlyQuest does not pick to play them, which is likely going to be 100 Thieves, because their final week's not bad, but they have a challenge ahead. Immortals, Shopify, NRG. First two, they should be favorites in, should clean up. Third game against NRG determines everything. You lose that, you likely go into a tiebreaker against Cloud9 for second place. You lose that, you probably go against FlyQuest, if I had to guess. In my opinion, it's a matter of 100 Thieves guaranteeing that they can play Cloud9 in that first round and a chance to beat them, or you go against FlyQuest. So yes, even if you can't play for first for, as 100 Thieves, you very much still have something to go for. As for the top team in FlyQuest, should be a 3-0 week, right? Should lock up number one seed, should be the best there, but then again, they dropped a game to Cloud9 already. Could they drop a game to TL? Absolutely. Could they drop one to NRG? Maybe. But either way, they hold a two-game gap over both C9 and NRG, so I think they're fine there. And again, they do have the 2-0 tiebreaker over 100 Thieves, so there really is no worry for them this upcoming weekend. It's more or less just putting a final stamp on it as the clear best team in the LCS heading into playoffs. That's it for me. If you haven't seen the Rendezvous, which is my 100 Thieves-specific series, be sure to check that out. My reactions to all 100 Thieves games are available on this channel. And if you're not already subscribed, be sure to do so. Thank you so much. I'll catch you on the next video. Adios. Mm -hmm.